Good news, everyone. Then where are we now? Do you have idiots on your planet? You're obviously confused in the It's me, Zoidberg, remember? From high school? Hello, you're listening to The Slurmcast, a podcast for no reason. Today we will be discussing Futurama Season 1, Episode 12, When Aliens Attack, with your hosts, Tommy Roulette. Hello. Pete Woodward. That's me. And I'm right here. <laughs> Joining us is our uh, very special guest, uh, Sarah Eisenhart. Hello. Hi. Hi, Sarah. Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> is that what this is? here. That was a really good intro, Horchi, <laughs> until you got your name wrong. Or did you do that on purpose? Uh, uh, everything I do is on purpose. Okay. Very good. Uh, that's going to work against you in a court of law. <laughs> um, so I didn't bring any notes for this for the first time. I gave you some. Did you read them? Yeah, it said a lot of jokes happened. Right. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I started watching this, and like Pete's always asking, like, when does this show get to... An episode where it's just, it feels like the Futurama that he remembers, where it's just like joke after joke, and it's really hilarious, and um, it just, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Just really fluid, and, and I think like this might be the one that really starts off like this. It starts off the series, you know, getting into that that groove or whatever. Oh, we've, we've referred to it in the past as the singularity, the singularity not yeah. the real singularity, but the fake Futurama singularity. And I, you know, I have a lot of notes this week. Uh, I think most of them refer to jokes, so that's probably good. One it's, thing it's that a good sign. I realized in... There were just too many. I was like, no. Before we get even into the whole episode, we never actually give credit to like the writer that wrote the episode. Yeah, that's true. And I feel like they have a lot to do with like the type of episodes that are like really That is good something one. that I uh, p- used to pay attention to a lot more. I, I pay attention to a lot more in dramas, and especially if I like nerd out with some drama and there's like reoccurring writers on it and they come up and I'm like, Oh, this Star Trek episode was written by this person or, or these are my favorite ones. These are my favorite X-Files episodes. I like that you refer to Star Trek and the X-Files as drama. There's genre. First of all, second of all, I think the thing that we should keep in mind for all of this is the fact that in general, whoever gets credit with the story isn't necessarily the person who wrote it. They're just the one who gets the initial credit, and then everything gets punched up, especially on a script like yeah, this. Yeah, you're right. I hate you, Pete. I, <laughs> you just I am it the all. breaker of dreams. But, uh, you know, and, and to be honest, I have not paid attention to the story writers on this at all, and my knowledge of Simpsons story writers is based purely on watching the commentary uh, on the old DVDs oh, for right. the first few seasons of that. So that, like... I, you know, George Meyer and John Swartzwelder and Dana Gould and people like that. Um, you know, those names I know, but on here, other than the David X. Cohen and Matt Groening and Eric Kaplan, I haven't paid attention to the names. Yeah, same here. Because And Kaplan, I only remember because we have our own Eric Kaplan yeah. that that guy's trying to be and isn't. Well, now that you've destroyed all of that, I just wanted to say it was his name is Ken Keeler. He also wrote Time Keeps a Slipping, which is like my favorite episode of the entire series i think i feel like he wrote a lot of stuff after future and i like anthology part one Mm -hmm. i could be wrong i I I just i don't know if his name's familiar because i i've seen it in the credits so many times on futurama or if it sounds like a comic book name it's it's kind of similar (laughs) to glenn glaze in its construction it is glenn glaze keeps uh hit me up and he really wants to be on the show Mm -hmm. so we'll have to see glenn glaze he famous photographer he has like twelve followers on Twitter. Whoa! But it's a highly curated list. Uh, so, Sarah, you're a big Futurama fan, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, as I found out recently, I didn't know that. Like a lot of our friends are like, uh, like it never really comes up. You know, it's not like something that just comes up when you're hanging out or whatever. And ever since we started uh, this podcast, like I'm finding out that people I've known for years are big Futurama fans, and that's awesome. Yeah, I've watched it for a really long time. I don't know. When did it come out again? It came out in 1999. No. Um, did you do you remember Probably. if you started watching it like when yeah, it I came out so. or? And then also when I went, I went out to school. I just watched it all the time. I still turn it on all the time. Just like that's how Tom noise, is. Like yeah, that's that's yeah, how Tom exactly. and uh, half of the people that have been on this podcast so far, <laughs> Kalman and uh, Sebastian and etc. Um, 
I'm still, uh, you know, lobbying for some dilettantes like myself, where I can come in and watch it. But I, you know, it's all so, some what I I, I have this vocabulary of Donald Trump. Uh, so, somebody who I I only is, have like three words best, in my word bag. Is at best a casual fan, mm-hmm. and maybe not even all that familiar with it, because I think that would yield some interesting perspectives. And I don't mean to say that that we're not excited to have you on the podcast, Sarah. It's mm-hmm. just it's a we have a lot of backbiting discussions off the mics. Mm. And that's one of our sticking points right now. Well, I mean, I haven't watched it from beginning to end in a while. Yeah, yeah. Probably years. So, But you still catch some episodes here and there? Like, yeah. yeah. Um, when you watched this one, did you remember it, like, verbatim? Or were you like, oh, I forgot about this part? Or Yeah, because I think there's a lot of, like, cutaways, like, in Oh, this yeah. One. There's so much going on in this episode. Um, like. So I remembered a lot of it. But there were certain parts where I totally just was like, oh, this happened. I, I feel like there's a lot of these that start off where I'm like, oh, yeah, this is this episode. And then halfway through, I'm like, oh, and then this happens at the end or the third act or whatever. And, you know, I actually, when I started watching this, I thought that when they were going to do the courtroom scene, that at some point, I, I thought the smelly hippie guy was going to show up in the lion and everything. I thought it was the popular episode. I thought uh. the two were combined. I just, that part of it, I'm like, oh, they're going to have to disguise Leela, but I forgot it's the, the eye that they had. That's the. The googly eye? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The googly eye. Yeah. And in that one, they take an eye away from the ape. They oh, yeah, yeah. They put the patch over it. Yeah, yeah. To make it look like Leela. <laughs> I, I, this absolutely is one of the best episodes, like, from the beginning up till now, for sure. There's... Well, you have the entire, like, it's like an ensemble episode. Oh, yeah. They're all in it. it. They're all in it a lot. And then you have, like, there's so many... You have, uh, you know... a little intro where they go to the beach and stuff that 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 could be like the setup yeah like that could have been a lot longer and it would have been great um you have a big space battle like a big star wars space battle um you have zap brannigan coming in like halfway through the episode and having probably so far the best zap brannigan's li- lines i think from where we are in this 12th episode and um, his, his, and then they do uh, like a little play. Like there's all there, there's like there's a, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on. And I, I I agree. I think that the joke saturation in this episode is pretty strong. I uh, you know with my usual criticisms right off the bat. So there's the weird cartoon, Daffy Duck cartoon. It, it was a Daffy Duck or a Donald Duck, whichever, some kind of ducks, and they were doing shadow puppets in front of a Klieg light. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't pay attention this time. Again, well, it's like, like this is a, like can can dancers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you you know, then they show them and they've got their little duck fingers in front of a, a Klieg light. That would instantly like liquefy those ducks or turn them into delicious wings or something. <laughs> I mean, Klieg lights get like fantastically <laughs> hot to where you would just you, you touch it and it will instantly burn your skin. And those ducks were just playing right in front of it like it was no thing. Hi, it did, very dangerous behavior to show in a three-second clip in the credit scene of a 17-year-old cartoon. Horribly irresponsible of nah. the animators. Nah, it's fine. <laughs> but they, they do the flashback at the beginning in the cold open, which you keep saying is going to go away, that they aren't going to do cold opens anymore. It eventually, I mean, yes. Correct. But, uh, yeah, everything will eventually stop, but I, I have yet to see it happen because it's still season one do you want tom to be wrong according to would netflix it you feel according better to if netflix is the it would bro- make me feel better netflix is the second season like the broadcast season if you buy the dvd yeah this episode and the next episode are i just, all in I just like how yeah. mad you get when i make you explain that every episode so i'm, I'm sorry to agitate you tom but you you really get Edit adorable out <laughs> <laughs> But uh, my only point of the cold open was that Fry was drinking lowbrow beer, mm-hmm. which, you know, that's a nice pun. But way later pun? in the episode, because it's not L O W B R O W. Yeah, they spelled it like Exactly. It's that like, doesn't count as a pun. It showed up before, hasn't it? I don't know. I that was. Like I, uh, it, it's either shown up already Hold or on. it's a eventually a. It, Tom's our expert. It comes up again somewhere else in the It series. comes up again later in the episode. That was the point I was trying to make, is like mm-hmm. later on there's empty lowbrow cans in the Planet Express living room on the table with Slurm cans. Oh, I didn't notice oh, that. Oh, yeah, 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 you're so, right. So is our, was this a brand that was resurrected? Was this... So like Visa and MasterCard are gone, but uh, lowbrow not discover. still... Discover's and, still yeah. around. They don't take it anywhere, but it's still around. And the lowbrow... 
I mean, like, is, is that something that persisted through two collapses of civilization during the thousand year period that Fry was frozen? Or was it a secret stash like or, the uh, uh, anchovies? Or was it like Battlestar Galactica where everything just happens again? Societies crumble and get buried under uh, years of uh, platelets and. and uh, but, platelets. Uh, but I don't, Battlestar I don't know. Galactica. Is it, is that, that's a part of the Earth. Uh, uh, crust, right? But, I believe Battle, it's pronounced plie. Battlestar Galactica plate. was in the past. Just plates? Like plate tectonics? What? Yeah. Platelets are like in your blood. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Sure you yeah, you're right. you buried under blood also. Yeah. That's, after that's, um, centuries. I bet that some scientists actually, will call uh, a tiny, will. Uh, tiny tectonic plate a platelet, though. Like if there's little ones. I don't know. And so like I'm probably wrong. Crackers on instead of like <laughs> Usually other people are right. Fry... <laughs> Sits or when he drops the pizza off, he's like, oh, "I'm more into uh, world's blankiest blank shows." And that was back. Do you remember like Fox? Oh, they're everywhere. Nothing but like world's worst or world's yeah, yeah. scariest. It was uh, shockumentaries. Like yeah. they were all over, which is I th- I thought was like part of the play on the episode title. Was like oh yeah yeah I think you're right like that would have oh or like when, I didn't even yeah. think of that I was like, thinking of like it was some video game reference or old sci-fi movie rec- reference but yeah that did makes you a lot ever of sense. they did one called Man vs Beast did you ever see that is that where the deer kicks the guy repeatedly in the face no they did um, I, like I saw that video <laughs> it was Kobayashi the hot dog champion versus a bear to see who could eat the more more hot dogs in no, a I mean, time. <laughs> really the time. And on, then that's like the crowning glory of this episode. This is I mean you might think Fox gets exploitative, but they had harnessed like 3 the dozen power little of hot people. Dogs? No. 3 dozen little people and harnessed them to a jumbo jet you know, in neutral. And then, like, an elephant and harnessed that to a jumbo jet and then had a race to see who could pull a jumbo jet faster. Oh, that's like when monks, like, pull, like, cars with their testicles or something. Yeah, yeah, but this was little people and an elephant. I mean, it was just, it was animal it was abuse. A, it was a giant spectacle. It was, it was, it was <laughs> insane. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I watched every minute of it, but it was, I, I had conflicted feelings about it for sure. It was something else from the from the minds of Fox. Well, what do you think of that? Do, did you do you like it? Do you did you do you, did you enjoy watching it? Did you feel guilty about watching it? You know, it my my it? my baser instincts. Yeah. enjoyed the hell yes. out of it. Yeah, and my uh, more sensitive, learned, higher uh, criticized it. Yeah, you were like, going yeah, like, not only is this horrible, I'm a horrible person for liking it. Yeah, that's that's compounded. That would be yeah. my. I loved World's Scariest Police Chases. The band or the show? Or both? Um, I mean, both, but I don't even know there was a band called that. Apparently. <laughs> yeah, I kind of remember that. I kind of re- that, that, that was that was a Cleveland band, right? I don't know. Wasn't it? I, th- Wasn't look, it? I, I'm, you could I'm, tell me there was anything, and I'd be like, oh, yeah. Oh, I remember oh, yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Just, I thought that's just what happened. <laughs> There's that yeah. movie, Hor- Horchlander 2, The Horchning. Oh, yeah, I feel like I saw the beginning of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, they still make fun of Labor Day. Who? In this episode. They, I, I oh, think, yeah, yeah. Yeah, from uh, Crammed Down Our Throat by Fat Cat Union Gangsters. Because it is a joke holiday. Is it, Tom? No, I mean, the meaning behind Labor Day. Is I think we've got him trapped. Tom, get out. We skipped the whole. <laughs> yes, yes, Kenny yes. The whole part. The what part? I know. The whole point of this episode, or the like setup of this episode in the beginning with. Oh, yeah. Single with the, female. Yeah, 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 with Fry spilling the Coke. Yeah, or, it was a beer. Uh, or, or, what is, or probably, or whatever. Yeah. He, Sarah, if you could sum up this episode like in a. like, In a tweet. A hundred yeah, kind of. Words. It, and I think it kind of goes like along with Pete's like. You can't see pictures. On podcast, I always put oh. pictures in there. Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, draw a picture and I'll describe it. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like, um, well, not charades. What's that game where you draw the Pictionary, right? Pictionary right? or win, lose, or draw? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, no, uh, all right. No. Um, oh, but well, what I wanted to say was that um, maybe just being a female, the part that I noticed the most was that like, um, it's like it's called foot popping. 
which is when like your girls are kissing on a guy and their foot pops up. They like, bring his oh, foot up. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Just like totally. Like the Laverne and Shirley stroke. move. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, it's probably since like the thirties. Yeah, like that old. Yeah, like before. I mean, like, that doesn't everywhere. happen for real. <laughs> No, uh, not night. Maybe I haven't had the rebel, oh. right. I person. always thought it was like like a involuntary reflex that just. <laughs> do you remember? That's what uh, happens. Do you remember uh, um, one of the Naked Gun movies where uh, <laughs> Leslie <laughs> Nielsen's <laughs> leg and then they all their legs went up? Do you remember that? Yes. Um, um, Pete, I thought you'd get more excited about that. Uh, so no. I don't know. No, I. I you were about to say something, yeah, and I was curious. I'm always about to say I something. Know. Listen to this, guys. Uh, 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 um, well, wait, uh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, thank God. So, Go ahead, Pete. So the foot popping. How I just notice it because it's like in every like cheesy like yep. romantic comedy. Isn't comedy? It's a comedic. And I think trope. that was the the it's point like, of that right, was of like, course. yeah. But I, I no, but I missed it. So like where did that trope. happen? In the unisex bathroom when yeah. she kissed the judge. Oh, 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 single the female lawyer. Credits. Okay. Yeah. After, like, you were picturing one of the Futurama pops characters. Out yes. Of the stall, yeah. Her shoe falls off because her foot pops up. Ah, uh, yeah. okay. It's such a weird, random thing to throw in there. Yeah. Just the, foot, the foot pop. And why was the stenographer yeah. in the bath, in the stall? Do you have to take that thing into the stall with you? I, I maybe she's I would love everything. I would love to read the transcripts from what happens in a bathroom, though. <laughs> what? Like, bathroom stenographer, that. That's a sketch that needs to be. And you're like own stall. Anybody's. Oh, okay. I mean, you you could That's install one play. at a music venue in the bathroom. You could install one in a courthouse in the bathroom. You could install one in a restaurant. You know, like bathroom Are stenographer they for for the the dialogue. For whatever, I'm surprised you, you that just it want record to hear poop sounds. Is that I'm surprised it hasn't been made into a television show by Fox yet. Bathroom stenographer. Maybe E. It could it go on E. Its, like, yeah, there was that time period. I don't know, but then again, there still is a lot of... Uh, you could just put toilet paper on the machine. <laughs> so uh, I, I never... This is obviously it's related to um, Allie McBeal. That's the, the key... Oh, yeah. Correct. Hey, here's, the here's key a good question. Did you guys watch thing. that show when it was on? Never. I did not. Never, never. Um... Like maybe sometimes I, I watched was, it. It's okay. It's a okay. You're, you're in a safe Sorry. room. I watched it, it a decent amount. My my uh, parents really liked it a lot. Yeah, but and, that's um, the same thing. I mean, it was like on. Yeah. And I never had a voice in. I remember the guy from watched. So it was like watch this. Or yeah, the, we had you know just your regular TV shows that everybody watched, and that was one of them. And it had a lot of uh, sexual hype. harassment. It, no, it, that, there's a reason that this cartoon did a parody of the show. Um, the guy from Ghostbusters 2 is in. Yeah, he uh, was. Um, so yeah, Peter, Peter McNichol. Peter McNichol, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, uh, it, I don't know. It was pretty good. It was a good. Um, what, what, that thing that, uh, I forget what you call it. That uh, uh, The um, dancing baby? No. Um, well, uh, Parker Lewis Can't Lose was like the first show to do it. And then like Scrubs and all those other comedies would do that. that thing where the where, fourth wall would be broken? Not the fourth wall, but where they would um, have ridiculous fantasies or ridiculous like like daydreams that would would happen you know like uh where they'd walter which, Mitty uh, it absurd up. things would happen that weren't really happening you herman's know, but it was, head what about herman's head mm -hmm. that just all happened in his head there was that going on it's not like that happened in the world in his office or whatever but isn't all the rest of it happening in their head what they're just playing it out in real life uh yeah okay i mean it's absurd yeah that's that's a there oh there wasn't a lot of um <laughs> we're we're twenty <laughs> minutes in and we're not even past the credits. <laughs> nope. Uh, I didn't mean it so is. back to those Daffy Ducks guys. <laughs> no, um So Fry's drinking slurm and covered in bed sores and Did he you gets see the defensive. slurm truck get blown up. Not I'm sorry, covered. Got to to him not, not covered. covered. I just like the fact that he's treating bed sores as status quo. He's like, It's cool. I'm just gonna lay here and, and get friction burns on my skin from being slothful. The I, amount uh, of time Fry's laziness saves everyone in this series is astounding. Yeah. It's crazy. And that happens to me a lot in real life. There's a lot of uh, just like accidental idiot moments that I feel like. When you're like, I'm not going to take notes for my podcast because it's just. And then it turned out to be the greatest podcast, not for us, but ever recorded in history. It's too bad it got lost after that fire. Oh, don't <laughs> joke about that. The second coming of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Why did Jesus destroy all the VHS? 
I just think the, <laughs> I have written well, down. Yeah. I think the energy there was probably. He's a digital guy. He's a digital deity. Super magnetic field or whatever came mm. by and it damaged most of them because a couple episodes ago they found a tape about uh, the garbage, garbage thing. Yeah. The garbage ball. Right. So not all the tapes were destroyed. And they watched, and uh, Fry bought was, all those VHS ball was tapes. In space, though, so it wouldn't have been on Earth when it when Jesus came again. But the no, tape, they didn't find it on the garbage ball. They found it somewhere on Earth. Or oh, yeah, okay. I can't remember exactly. When they go to Manya Beach, I like that they kind of take the Planet of the Apes uh, Statue of Liberty head on the beach and sort of expand on it to throw everything on there. That was an interesting sort of construction that they did. I don't know why, but I thought the mad scientist face in Mount Rushmore, not just that it was in Mount Rushmore, but his like perfect, like, like uh, the, the comic oh, book, the super villain trope mayor. Of, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a governor Goggles. was and, perfect. And yeah. then they pull the full Independence Day with the White House. Your getting And they reference movie. it. <laughs> Is that, that one really, of my that's movies. really your favorite it's not movie? It's my favorite movie. It's one of it's my favorite one of movies. movies. I love favorite Independence movies. Day. I love ID4. And guess what? <laughs> I haven't seen the sequel yet. Hey, here's a here's a quick game. Wait, hold on. Sarah, Have a, you looked like you were really upset about something. What were you gonna say? Um, what? Oh, it's something that I watch all the time when it comes on the TV. Yeah, it's one of those. Day? One of those like bad action movies yeah. that like when it comes on, it's it's super fun. All right. Have I seen Independence Day? No. Have I seen Independence Day? He has it. There's a bunch of movies he hasn't seen. He hasn't seen no? shit. Yeah, I, I, would, I would I would go with no. I have. Oh, oh. yeah. I okay. like. I really like I, well. Uh, I lost this game. Do I get dunked? What what happens? I like Bill Pullman. Uh, you know what? I He's like a Will great Smith. President, and he really yeah. is. Yeah, I'm curious to see what bearded uh, ex President Pullman is like in the se- in the sequel. Does he pull like a full Letterman in the sequel where he's just bald? No. He's like haggard or whatever. Did you yeah. see it? You didn't see he's it. Got no. Really Did you? Nice hair. I read the entire he plot does. of it though, and I imagined what happened in my head. Yeah. You you kind of you, you could. That, I don't that, even know how they could get anything done without Will Smith around. He yeah. he, he's a blockbuster tentpole. I'm, I'm uh, kind of uh, I, I almost don't want to see it. But then again, Jeff Goldblum. So you know, it's sad. What do you think hot buttered Zoidberg would a smell like and b taste like? That Seinfeld episode where. <laughs> uh, Whoever, who that sounded, I, I can't remember. <laughs> that was now. like a pre edit where, 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 where it sounds Kramer. Oh, no, Kramer is on the port and he's using butter to uh, to tan himself. To tan himself. Oh, yeah, and yeah, then yeah, yeah. Newman and smells yeah, yeah. <laughs> cooking. It makes that's it, what I imagine it would. It made me think of like the you know, speaking of the weird cartoons that they show at the beginning when they would have like somebody's starving and then they start to smell some food and the vapors turn into like a wispy ghost hand that pulls them in by the nose. Mm-hmm. And they blow it like a little off their feet. Yeah, they're they're yeah. just completely mesmerized. Um, also, wait when they before they went to the beach when they were still at the uh, Planet Express when Soyberg had the like lobster floaty. Oh on. yeah, I didn't well, notice yeah. that he had a really. <laughs> How did I miss that? <laughs> and then he goes for a scuttle. Yes, first time. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah scuttle. scuttle. That was yeah, like a nineteen hundreds <laughs> bathing suit. Yeah, yeah. Also, uh, <laughs> but perfect. Like he should have that. Right. And then he, when he gets trapped and Bender releases and Bender's just wandering underneath the ocean. But I think... It made me really oh, want to see wait, the Atlantic Do you have something one. that you think I had a critical thought about? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Obviously. I saw a whole bunch of stuff. I'm like, oh, I can't wait for uh, Pete to bring up this thing and just annoy the shit out of everyone out there. And Bender's magical all, chest all cavity of is now a grill. By the way, we're up to two listeners ever since uh, that, that, that hard work bump. The John Lovitz and yeah. um, uh, Ellen, Ellen Claycorn are listening to the show. John so, Lovitz was our first listener. Hey. Yes. He just. Did did you, I thought you said hey. Oh, saying hey to say John Lovitz. Oh. Oh yeah. Hey. He's. Uh, you know. I have mixed feelings about him now. Who's Oitberg? No, John Lovitz. Yeah. Well, you know what? Not well, writing enough reviews. No. I'll, you know what? I'll get back to it. We can actually touch on that later. Did he do something? No, well, also, no. lobsters aren't um, naturally red. They're kind of well, brownish. They're not. They're not. Like the ones that he got trapped in the lobster. Yeah. Yeah. No, they were red. Crabs are red, though, right? Sometimes. Depends on know. the crab. You rob- them. Depends After where you, you get them, them on your body. Aren't lobsters red? <laughs> like when you find them? In the th- no. They're like no? brown. Have you ever walked by the seafood tank Green. at yeah. your local grocery store? But they're not they're red. Not bright they're not red. red until you boil them up. Uh, I have a, an imagination based on all the cartoons I grew up on that automatically... 
uh, blocks out whatever actual sensory things are happening and puts cartoons. Well, in hold up. Else. So when I walk past, then him, why like is that, Zoidberg red? Is he cooked? Well, no. I mean, I gave that away because he's, he's an alien. Yeah, yeah, right, right. So but like, okay. but he's some sort of crustacean. He's right. cr- he's he crustacean like adjacent. Like he does, yeah. But he does a bunch of other stuff. crustacean like, stuff. But like sometimes he does. But this crabs thing. aren't crabs aren't red either. Well, let me pose no, this they're question. Not sometimes either. they're blue. Let, let me pose this question to you, Sarah. Alive. In three, in you know, uh, a thousand years, maybe something happened and oh. lobsters are now red. It's a it's a possibility. Yeah. It's all no, 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 you guys. That's impossible. Look, listen, they're all red. You know what was red? Bender's ass. Mm-hmm. Because he was roasting food inside his magical chest cavity. Way to bring it he, back. Good because segue. he had hot coals inside it cooking food. Mm-hmm. And, and I think the thing that you, I mean. And he showed both pain and relief in that Exactly, scene. exactly. So there's there's a whole bunch of stuff going on there. But, I mean. I think the part that you guys don't get is I'm okay with Bender having a magical chest cavity, but I want it to be recognized as magical and or backed up with some kind of science that makes it TARDIS-like. Well, magic, exact reason why uh, a thousand years and a thousand light years that, that was another Percy I-8 that was, another was one able of those, to... Um, excuse me, I was talking. You, you were done. <laughs> uh, that, Go ahead. That was another one of those... Uh, Wait, 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 though. Why are you suggesting that there's magic involved with Omicron Percy I-8? That was a line from the, the episode. How was it? Where? Well, also because it's a thousand Fry. light years away, and they're able the to end. get back faster. Well, that, but so they, also, they, were, they were watching no, it. The, the signals were traveling the signals at the speed of light speed, from they, the Earth. So a thousand so years from that. They travel faster than the speed of... Clearly. Oh, in this universe? Yeah, absolutely. Scientists also increase the... Uh, speed of light at some point. Oh yeah, I in forgot the about that. Yeah, yeah. So it okay. is irrelevant. Oh yeah, that's our whole, current like, speed of light that, yeah. is <laughs> with the TV irrelevant that went out there cartoon. is is irrelevant to the amount of time that Lur and his wife guys. One of you pronounce also, the wife's name. Wait, where? Let's show me. I'll spell it. Okay. N D N D. Oh yeah. Uh, she, she said he says it. He said he says it. He in says the it. Later episodes, right? It's uh. Under under. Oh yeah, okay. Under under. under. Yes. No, uh, but also, uh, you know, it uh, doesn't necessarily have to travel uh, conventionally. They, they could be a wormhole. They could open a. Uh, I think by adding the subtitle that said "one thousand years in the future," they're establishing that it's traveling at the same speed that Fry was frozen. You know that that it was. Light was traveling for a thousand yeah, years. Yeah, so they got it there and then there. They, that's yeah, and then that's they what, just no, nobody's pop disagreeing over. with that. That's what we were saying. Yeah, they popped over. I uh, I feel like we. I don't know what. I don't think we're on the same page about this. How how so? Who what are you guys talking about? Um, what's I, the conflict? What's happening? I'm just acting like a professional beach bully. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which was, I mean, that was great. Pulling back to sort of, do you re, do you remember? I had him. Yeah, I, those I, comics. With yeah, the, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, when did they stop putting ads like that in comics? Do they still put I ads like that? I in had comics? a bunch of old comics that um my my uh, I my mom you know and my I don't know what you're talking about. Gave to so me. can you there really? Was, yes. Can you? Do you? Wait, know, no, no. Let's leave it no. there. Don't tell Tom anything. Wait, I don't okay. know either. Okay. All right. Okay. I'll uh, Sarah, for your for your benefit. In the olden days. Your like thoughts. the 1980s is probably when this wrapped I think up. it ended in the 80s. Yeah. I think it was in the well, then maybe. There would be um, maybe like 80. Your superhero comics, your Green Lanterns, your Plastic Mans, your Uncanny X Men's, and whatnot would have ads in them for things like the, Sea Monkeys, X Ray Vision, X Ray. I mean, I used to read X Men comics. Mm-hmm. No, no, this is way before. Like my my uh, I, uh, uh, family had a bunch of old comics from the 60s and 70s. Okay. Uh, like leftover, and, and I took them all, and I still have them. Um, and, uh, uh, like there's all these advertisements, there's this one reoccurring advertisement and then it's, it's referenced in a lot of like pop culture stuff. And I love seeing it. Was it was the drama. Charles Atlas bodybuilding system. Yes. Ah, yeah. So the ad was basically set up like a mini comic where there's the 98 pound weakling on the beach and the bully comes up and starts kicking sand oh, in his face. Oh, yes. Okay. No, I know. I and know then, exactly then what you're he, talking about. he cool. learns about the Charles Atlas bodybuilding thing mm-hmm. and goes through it and comes back. And, and he comes back and he kicks the shit he, out of the yeah, bully and gets the, the girl because yeah. w- women apparently 
love when men get into like just crazy rages and beat the shit out of each other like gorillas. He came back and he was the alpha, and uh, you know, yeah, that was the was, I mean that for, was the subtext. For every of the whole kid thing. reading a comic book at that time was no, dude. You, you but know. the the beauty of the whole Charles Atlas bodybuilding thing isn't it? You wouldn't be ripped like Schwarzenegger or like. Um, uh, one of the the rock i don't yeah, know or the do rock or, or vin diesel or something it was like you'd be ripped like william shatner in 1966 so there was no definition there was maybe some muscle tone underneath a, like kind of a smooth fat coating and you had a girdle on well not not <laughs> charles atlas he just had like the the speedo mm. but it wasn't like a six pack it was just sort of a general V-ish shape to his trunk, but is that like a dad body? No, there was this no, thing. No, there was uh, no like gut for body. for a long time. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, like, uh, like, the, the like broad shoulders, narrow. But pre yeah. Michael Phelps swim, like a real man Michael Phelps body. looks like, like the alien. There, there was a like you'd see like, like a muscular the chiseled, dude, like, hairless. People, people weren't working out to like pre exercise every little man dorsimus maximus inside of you know there wasn't a, as much of a science to it, and when you'd see like a a muscular guy back then, except for that fucking guy that played Hercules. Uh, I could remember the the old Hercules with the you know. Oh yeah, I mean that was that was sort of it, right? Or no, no, no. Was that, that guy was like cut, but I mean that there was, was Schwarzenegger. Oh, I'm so glad we can talk about dude bods. That's I've been, <laughs> twelve episodes and we haven't gotten into uh, <laughs> talking about muscle men yet, and fin- we finally got here. Um, I, but yeah, there was this kind of like, like uh, I, I, I can't think of an example. Um, but just like a. Like a muscular guy in like the fifties or the sixties was like Bluto on Popeye. Yeah, I mean that's a that's mm-hmm. good, you know. Or Popeye on Popeye, really skinny upper Popeye arms. Popeye on Popeye. Popeye on. Uh, uh, I've seen uh, that video. Uh, uh, Peyote. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, uh, forearms. <laughs> Robin Williams and Robin Williams. Forearms roughly the size of you know oh. forty millimeter <laughs> artillery shells, but then upper arms like these mic stands. I hate to tell you this, Popeye, but your arms, you have tumors. (laughs) (laughs) There's a a couple in your head, too. (laughs) You're riddled with cancer, Popeye. How about Amy putting on the spray bikini? Do you know when I watched it, I thought those were coconut shells, and I was like, where did she get coconut shells? And I realized that they're the hamburger buns. Oh, the buns, buns, yeah. (laughs) Oh, I thought they were coconut shells, too. No, they were the buns. I did, too. I just like Uh, The burger fell off. Nibbler ate the burger and took her uh, bikini top. Then I was like, oh, beach, coconuts. And then I was like, wait, where did she get the uh, um, buns? I just like the professor's reaction when he's <laughs> raining he's just like oh oh my his little oh my like, it kind of sounded um like they added that in later zoiberg gets stuck in the lobster trap bender is just wandering around the sea after he cools off his uh charcoal grill ass in the water which is very yosemite sam exactly oh, yeah. yeah it's it's a total it's old a warner brothers deal yeah. like i lit my ass on and fire those guys behind this show they love that stuff like for example they put an old cartoon at the beginning of but then when he know. lets zoidberg out he also lets out a cheese it so See, do, are we gonna you. find this in every episode going forward because that that sort of became a thing who in, cares i'm just curious You'll find out when you when you watch uh, the episode. You're being real optimistic about my attention. It's obvi- <laughs> obviously, it's a reoccurring thing. So, the professor was very excited about the last time the alien overlords came and made the smartest ones pair off and mate continuously. When the did he aliens, shoot Panaka into his mouth? I forget. Did he, he totally yeah, did. He did. Right? did. Yeah, okay. But oh, when the Panaka. aliens <laughs> a- attacked the beach with the Independence Day thing, uh-huh. when it first comes in, they're trying to take the picture right in its Bender's body, and the body looks up when everything, but his head's not on. So the body is just looking up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't notice that. Do you think great. it's maybe a, just a natural reaction? Or that or they're linked. Bender, then, like, I mean, yeah, he, they're linked. He's so. thinking about looking up, the body looks up. Uh, who cares? It's probably a Bluetooth like or something. Limb. Bluetooth. What is that? It's a... Uh, Short distance. Uh, it's that thing where frequency. where I answer people all the time uh, out in public. Wireless and go like, oh, protocol. I'm sorry, what's that? And then they're talking on their Bluetooth. You can, go for, like about, an asshole. You can go for about 30 feet in radius and create, you know, really small Tom. networks of devices. Magic. Yeah, he's got it. All right. Um, <laughs> Magic. Got it. Today's winning. <laughs> Not a lottery number is four. <laughs> All right, so so then the aliens come and they're back at Planet Express and they're watching TV and everything's getting blown to shit. It's President McNeil, which yeah. has to be a reference to Phil Hartman as 
Bill McNeil. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. So they follow up with that one-two punch of bringing Zap back right away. So it's like, here's a guy that's named after another famous Phil Hartman character, followed by a character that was supposed to be Phil Hartman. And he urges everyone to just fire wildly into the air. That's good <laughs> advice. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, my God. Zap every time fucking he, lines in this episode. He, I, just any time he's on screen, he's just hilarious. And the intro to him every time he comes into an episode, like this one where he has the bloody battle defeating the pacifists of yeah. uh, Gandhi <laughs> Nebula. Gandhi Nebula. <laughs> And he's he's really got his uh, his unctuousness sort of turned up to ten. He's like he starts right in on Leela with the luscious Captain Leela and just really really going after it, not ever picking up that she's thoroughly repulsed. What by about him. The, the whole time when he the whole beginning of his speech about talking about uniting people and with some of you are white, some of you are black, some you're of you are brown, brown. <laughs> Indian guy, you're silver. silver. I really Thank liked. When so they 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 take the forces of Earth under the leadership of Zap Brannigan, and they all fly their spacecrafts. Every spacecraft you know in the world, Slurm truck, including the Slurm truck, <laughs> they all fly into space to blow up the alien crafts and and attack the mothership. That's an epic space battle. It's a really a, it's a huge space. It battle. still looks good it years later. Like- <laughs> it's like the, Star Wars and Star Trek and like the stink lines on the giant ball of garbage, the mothership uh making itself visible from its yeah. camouflage was a really, really cool effect. Yeah, yeah. Like wait, they, wait, I have something about that exactly because the first thing when I saw that do, do any of you watch Star Trek? Yeah, Next yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm watching it right okay, now. So like the first in thing my I mind. think <laughs> when I see that is um that episode with Q. Where he does the Where's grid. The grid? Quincy yeah, Jones? It, <laughs> no, um, oh. Bond. Uh, well, there he does this like this the space grid. Yeah. Which then I saw. Where they're there later, and then it just kind of like fades in and they're like, oh, we're still we're yeah, stuck. We're stuck. And they think they're they've escaped, but they're still in it. Yeah, and, they're yeah. stuck in it. But that's what it reminded me of. And then it came up later and what's oh, what's that movie with the tree dude? Uh, the raccoon Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It showed up in that too, right? There what, was the another grid? grid. I don't remember that. Didn't I only saw all that the once. Things like lock all the. I don't remember, but you might be right. Probably. I. I. That's one of those movies in I the really liked, and I meant layer. to watch it, and then I didn't. But like, I was wondering if they actually thought about that, or if they just were like, if they were actually trying to reference some like a weird. Star I'm sure. Yeah, that's definitely. Generation. It's either that. It's like either early. I think it was like. Oh, that was, was like an early one. That was. Um, like, I don't even know if that's, like, the first time they met Q That might have been, yeah. I think that might have been uh, 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 Farpoint. Um, a what? Farpoint. That's the name of the pilot. Fartpoint? No, Farpoint. It's, it's actually, it's... Um, pilot I'm going to get fired from, from my nerd club. <laughs> uh, uh, escape? Escape from Farpoint? Oh, I'm terrible. I don't like the first season. Um but yeah, no, I think that's the With first one. Snake they, 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 when they first point. meet you and they, they're in the grid and then they leave and there's the trial and then they think they left and then the grid pops up again. Uh, Fry was wearing Luke Skywalker's helmet. Oh, yeah. For yeah, 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 yeah. That whole thing. Wait, that what was, was the whole dupe, dupe on it? That's the uh, that? Democratic Order of Planets. Okay. I'm so glad you knew that. I, I love you. <laughs> I didn't get it. Yeah, that's the name of the, like inter, like almost like a Starfleet. Okay, is the Democratic Order of Planets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Dupe. known as Dupe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it turns out that the aliens have come because they just want to see what happens at the end of Single Female. Yeah, I Water. know. I watched the show, Pete. Right, but you were, I don't even know where you were going. You're naming off actual episode names from Star Trek and stuff. Like, I just want to talk about Callista Flockhart. Is she still with Harrison Ford? I, I believe they are happily married. I think still, they went underground. Underground, like, like in a bunker, in like a media Clint way, Eastwood? or yeah, in a yeah. physical way, like, canned food like Randy way. Quaid type <laughs> going underground. Randy yeah. Quaid did not oh go underground. <laughs> <laughs> he went north. He went the opposite of going <laughs> underground. He was he went he into was space, putting he, he, homemade porn videos on YouTube with him wearing a mask. He went into space. Mm-hmm. He flew oh, into yeah. the blue light. Killed the uh, mothership, and then we figured no. out how to. He drove into it with a with a plane. 
planet. Oh, they were they were in the Earth atmosphere. That wasn't the mothership. That was a ship. Does that qualify him as the best Quaid or the least best Quaid? He's the what do you, what do you mean? He's the worst. He's terrible. Randy? Yeah. Oh, Who maybe the funnest Quaid. Dennis Who else Quaid. is there? Besides Dennis. Uh Quaid from uh Total Recall. Oh, he's the best. Yeah. Uh, so then what does that make Dennis? If Quaid from Total Recall is the best. Dennis Quaid is the Stephen Baldwin of the Quaid family. <laughs> oh. The St- Stephen Baldwin? Then what is Randy? No, okay, get Randy Quaid is the Stephen Baldwin of the Quaid family. Dennis Wait, Quaid, okay. Billy Baldwin, and Noel. Yeah, how do you, how do you? No, Billy Baldwin is the Dennis Quaid of the Baldwin family. Inner Inner Space is the Dennis Quaid of Martin Short. I would. So does that make Randy Quaid the Stephen Baldwin? And I mean, I think we can all agree. I'm 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 putting words in your mouth, Sarah. You can certainly die, You know, um, have a dissenting opinion. But are we all agreeing that Steven is, in fact, the worst bald one? This is making me think about my brothers. Currently, now? Yeah. I still... He's more famous than some of the other bald ones, I, but they Biodome. kind of... They still That's have to say. dignity. Mm, yeah. Sarah, do you have any brothers? Uh, I'd rather not answer Do you have any question. bald ones? Okay. Do you do have, any have <laughs> siblings? <laughs> um... Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Oh, we had a long discussion about this. Edit. <laughs> did Did any of them uh, star in Thirty Rock, Beetlejuice, or uh, National Lampoon's Vacation? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. But uh, you know, anything's possible. Everybody Plastic could have surgery. a little Baldwin in them, or a little Quaid. This is the first time in this episode that we meet the president. McNeil? Oh. That hasn't happened yet? Oh, we met the uh, mayor of New York. Right. Uh, mayor Poopenmeyer. Poopenmeyer. But we haven't met, like, the president. Yeah, and then they're that kind of a reoccurring thing, but there's more presidents. He doesn't say know, anything the... about being president of anything. He's just president. But they don't say president of Earth. They just say... Right. They don't say it, really? No. I don't think so. They just say the president. Right. Yeah. So right. you don't know that it's actually president of Earth. Yeah, we haven't found out yet that Earth's yeah. unified, maybe? Right. Okay. I then forgot Earthican, Earthican president. But then they kill him off, like yeah. right away. It's a very Mars attacks. Uh, yes, too. That was great. Well, then it turned into the little rascals. Lena, let's put on a show. That's what I'm saying. There's so many like with the each, the yeah. uh, act in this episode is like a whole other. Could be its own episode. It's its own. Yeah, uh, that was hilarious with the, like the building of the set, and then like it's intense and like super intricate, and oh, yeah. then. Um, the jurors are like that was one of my favorite. <laughs> 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 it's Terrible. just uh, uh, Hermes and was Hermes and was there another Amy and, and Amy and then and then like the yeah, cardboard kind of stick figurey uh, and Leela's googly eye yes <laughs> and then Fry's chair that he is the the director's chair or whatever that just has Fry like Fry. spray painted <laughs> on the back of it. Uh, the, and the, then like yeah. when the vendors like camera one. Camera two, I, camera three. When that, <laughs> where where was camera three? It doesn't when even that, matter. When that came up, is... I I was I was watching it and I uh, I just was like Pete's laughing harder right now in this part of this episode. Than... I was I was perplexed because the th- it, okay it was his th- penis. Okay, was it? <laughs> yeah, of he course it was. He doesn't even have a cod piece for he, that to the, come out of. The camera, or did it come out of his, his magical his chest? His eye cameras uh, were shaped like penises, and then uh, I don't know you, what yours was, looks like, but. You know, v- vaguely conical, and I think that's about it's as silver, uh, and it has a lens on the end of it, just like everyone else's. <laughs> we were talking about mine's different. Bender's eyes last. <laughs> <laughs> I just got that. <laughs> we know we were talking about Bender's eyes last uh, episode, and you were you could get when they fell, fell out, out and then they sound like light bulbs. And other cameras, mm-hmm. so yeah. they're a type of optical glass. I think, like Bender's chest, they're a, a you Magic. know, they can be yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Bender, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bender is forty percent everything as yeah. soon as you find yeah. out. That's, that's, that's some fuzzy uh, math. We haven't even gotten to that. Oh nope. my god, I can't wait to how did, how to did all you those guys questions? How did you feel about Amy body shaming Leela? I played D and D for the first time last night. I didn't feel anything. No. 
told you I'm a men's rights activist. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I, what? Huh? Amy, Amy makes a crack about Leela's thighs. No, I remember that part. Yeah, I just, I, I thought like, no, what? No, no, were no, they just what? trying to be like, no. cat? Yeah, yeah. No, that totally. was a cute like like catty thing. Uh, th- wait, way more to wait, the point. Wait, so Horchie the just whole says episode, that girls being catty is cute. Some no, of us, some of us might find it kind way. of um, repulsive because it's oh, man, just that I kind of negativity. Pedal fast enough. Um, uh, uh, the whole like okay, the point of this episode was um, Fry s- saying that uh, uh, you know people want television to be simple. Uh, uh, that you know they're they're afraid to change whatever. It's very true for television at that and time. hot naked it's affairs funny. all hot over. Affairs? But but oh. but 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 there, like, can you not have a hot naked affair? It's like one of those like oh, mental... but it's an affair. I it's it, even if you don't is have it, is it like those emotional affairs? That yeah, no, and that and that's hot and that's kind of naked in a way. Well, um, I, I, I mean, what about current affairs? That wasn't either <laughs> hot nor naked. Don't don't. That was my that was my <laughs> impression. It, I of guess the... it depends on how long you sustained a relationship purely by dry humping. Quick show of hands. When was the last time anybody dry humped in here? Does it d- uh, against but another person, or can it be an hands? inanimate object? Because <laughs> That will completely change whether or not I'm going to raise my hand. So I'm not, wait, I'm not sure I can show just how so, I dry humped with my hands. <laughs> just so uh, those of you listening at home, uh, everybody raised both of their hands and, and nodded. In, uh, I raised uh, three hands somehow. Th- camera, camera, camera three. three. <laughs> um. I loved Bender's theme song before they even yes. started their fries. Oh, episode. oh yeah, oh yeah, that, yeah, that was, yeah. Oh, that was one of my sorry. favorite parts. Did you feel like um we're, no, hold on. Real oh, yeah. quick, we're getting back. We were discussing, you know, men and How women. How long do I have to wait? Men are, men are from Omicron Percy I7 and women are from um, or what no. Omicron women Percy are from I9. Omicron Percy I7 and men are from Omicron Percy I9. Women are from Omicron Percy I7, men are oh, from really? Omicron Percy I9. Which is I Do you remember the men are uh, women are from Men are from, men are from yes. Mars, women are from Venus. Yeah. That guy made like a gajillion dollars. Oh yeah, I, I that book was in my house like when I was growing up, like around that. It was, I mean, it just sold like hotcakes, it and it's it's I basically found, uh, we tried the, to burn it in the <laughs> fireplace, and then it just showed back up on the bookshelf. <laughs> uh, it, it's basically <laughs> like a, a three hundred page hack terrifying. joke premise. Of, I mean. I don't Doesn't know. Have, like funny cartoons, you know. Sometimes like those like sexuality books. I found like, one of those of under my Calvin uncle's mattress. <laughs> uh, the Joy of Sex, where everybody had like the bushes, and it was like drawn. It was like a sixties like, or seventies like, drawing or whatever. Like yeah. like a, a it was very important a hosta. Huh? <laughs> um, or an arbor vitae, like those kind of bushes. Oh, are those names of bushes? I don't know. It's a like it's uh, a gardening joke. People. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, d- d- flora and fauna and uh, uh, um, uh, foliage and, and you were just talking about like it. I, what? Flora, fauna. Yeah, no, and but foliage. I don't know. Like you could point the to three Fs. Anything like customers are always like, oh, what, what, what are this thing? And I'm like, what, what, what's that? Where's that? I, you know, um, I, you do these guys. I just, I, I just kill bugs. Yeah. Uh, so all right, so this um, episode is a lot of parody of the the show L.A. McBeal. Uh, at the time when that show was on, there was a lot of um, that that happened because you know that show was was under a, a microscope. Um, There's a lot of you know back before the internet was the you know the internet internet where you, the magazines and and little like stupid like just blurbs on like uh, network TV and 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 dumb cable shows. There would be a lot of oh this show is about. Um, this promiscuous and the parody is about this this promiscuous uh, independent woman. Was she Did really promiscuous like or was she just sex positive? That's what I'm saying right now. Like now it, that that wouldn't. That's how we would. Uh, that's how is the premise the, of that show to slut shame Allie McBeal? That's what I'm saying. Like it wasn't it though? Wasn't that the point of it? It was that they, it was it was it was jokes. I mean it was it was it's 1999 I mean, or 2000 whatever, or was it just like, playing into the prurient interests of the American public at large it was at that Fox. time? What's yes. that? It was on Fox, right? Yeah, yeah. which was well, all about well, for sure. Being... But I mean, the show, yeah. Okay, not talking about they the got show. surprisingly Lisa racy Lisa. without showing butts like ABC was doing. But but not not talking about the show. L.A. McBeal. 
just them parroting that because the jokes were there was a ton of them about her you know um uh, uh i mean okay were they making fun of the show or were, were they making fun of that type of woman in 1999 like do you think i think they were making fun of the show which in turn was a commentary on women at the time wasn't it though i mean do you kind of feel like those jokes wouldn't how many know, wouldn't really first of all wait they had a woman that was a lawyer <laughs> so right there it's i mean it's I veering into as soon as i heard they bender's still magical chest care you know territory that's unheard of magic got it <laughs> no i think i think well ellie mcbeal as a whole was wait 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 w h o l e or h o l e a uh, little of both okay ellie mcbeal as a whole and ellie mcbeal's whole mm -hmm. were a little bit of a <laughs> damn it <laughs> start over <laughs> I think whenever a show like this or The Simpsons references some other show in some sort of a parodic way. So it's a contemporary way. Yeah, it's, a, it's contemporary. It could be something in the past, but if, if, they're, if they're pulling from something in, say, a genre, like when they make a Star Trek joke, that's more of, we love this and this is kind of ridiculous. I think when a show like Futurama who was the redheaded stepchild of the Fox lineup back then, always on the verge of getting canceled and such, is making a commentary on a show like Ally McBeal, which was a flagship program for yeah. several years. Oh, They're no, just going, I, this is the highest rated piece of shit on this network, no, well, even and this I, is what people want, and even, we're smart nerds. Even and, by rrr. like the whole episode being around, like we can't see the season finale, we're going to blow up your planet, mm -hmm. is even referencing how popular... Ellie McBeal oh, was yeah. at that point. Even on Omicron Percy I eight. Right. Didn't that a happen thousand with, layers away. With a uh season Five. finale of Game of Thrones with HBO. It ha it went yeah. Down. Well so, so that happened the night the Cavs won the finals. So personally, and really I I say personally, but like in my home, my wife and I are not really sports fans at all. So everybody else in the city of Cleveland Stopped secured their weapons and stopped <laughs> yeah stopped watching porn and was watching the Cavs final i did both exactly you, i mean one or the other and we were we and like a half dozen other people were like we're ready to watch game of thrones and apparently hbo go was down or hbo now whichever one we subscribe to i actually have a legal subscription to it but it, it was down from like three in the afternoon until like 10 45 that night and all hell broke loose. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Ha! Uh, I, one last observation. They destroy the aliens. They, they're, uh, or the aliens say, you've, you know, pleased us enough that the aliens leave. So in that way... But we didn't get the secret to immortality. That was my favorite part. I didn't notice it. Uh, I watched it twice. Thanks, Zoidberg. Huh? Oh, and then that, that. And then there was such a, oh, such a good Zoidberg. And, yeah. Which was really funny when he put on the Spanish accent. When he was... <laughs> Huh? Yes, I'm glad you brought uh, that up. Prosecutor Ramirez, I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, he yeah, really yeah, yeah. And he's right gracias. Now. gracias. <laughs> I I really like how his lips get flabbery when he talks. I I I, I become more and more enamored with I like Zoidberg. when he gets angry and they go Yeah, yeah, it's all just Well, then he eats her eyeball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's great. He's repulsive and yet so endearing all at the same time. It's really that 1915 bathing suit. I need to get, I need <laughs> to get one of those. Hoping it's made out of wool. I really need to get one of those for a number of reasons. Somebody I, else brought that up recently that I was talking to. I was like, oh, where do you find one of those? Yeah. I, could, I mean, I could either go like middle-aged German tourist mm -hmm. for the fully minimal thing and just be, like, completely shameless or go Portland about it and I'm just be like, look at me, I'm an old-timey muscle yeah, man. I'm surprised the hipsters haven't embraced that and found those <laughs> bathing suits and been hanging out down at the beach this summer. Well, now I'm not going to do it. I, th I thought I, I wait, don't really the go way, to the beach. I don't either. But I hate the sun. I love it, but I don't want to wear wool in it. Is that what yeah, old no. ba the time you be? We, we saw you of? at the arts festival this weekend, and that sun was brutal. Was like, great. it was really, I can't handle it. It wasn't that bad. I'm half desert person, so <laughs> oh. I love it.
Like yeah. a, 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 like, so uh, like a Tuscan Raider. Yes. <laughs> so many goggles. But uh, my Show my me uh, back. like my a Raider numbers. <laughs> is that like a built-in vape machine on their face? Is that what that is? Uh, I didn't get that. Jawas feature. Oh, fan people. It might it might cost extra or something. The only the only thing I was gonna say is when the Earth is liberated from the alien threat. Everyone on Earth is dressed like a dirt person. Like, everyone on the street that's out rejoicing looks 100% shabby. They're also rejoicing in the same background scene as the uh, electric Big piece den of garbage? In, um, when, no, when Bender gets addicted to electricity. Oh, so is that just supposed scene. to be Skid Row? It's kind of, Well, I mean... I thought they showed uh, different yeah, locations, probably. and everybody was just like, look at us, I we're think they shabby. just showed, look, here's yeah. like a crappy part of New, New York. But there's the one, and, and that's the scene where uh, the, the clown hugs the nun. <laughs> yeah, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> that unites everyone. Well, yeah. I'm just really happy those beanies, the helicopter made it through to the year 3000. The what? The little were, those, were those in this episode? The helicopter, like the little children wear. Oh, that was like in an earlier oh, episode, too. I didn't notice that. Well, that. That was in Big Piece of Garbage. Yeah. Because the professor, one of his rivals in the um, the science competition, that's the invention, is the beanie with the propeller that can actually fly. I didn't notice that in this episode. I didn't either. Oh, one of the re- rejoicing citizens was wearing one. Oh. Was it spinning? Uh, I can't remember. Hmm. Maybe he was just levitating using magic. Well, they're usually like fat kids so that they're like grounded. But that's what I like. I was a really is fat that kid. Well, you, hang if on. If you were like a little I was, skinny wisp of a child and you had a propeller on your head, you were gone. You I was never away. see you again. <laughs> I shopped in the husky section. If they still called it that, I still would. Oh my God, I hope so. And I've never once had one of those hats. And and I think most of it, like my 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 general had... problem with millinery is that my <laughs> head is so goddamn big. I have a very large head, also. I can't believe they had a uh, like a section God, in the department store town. called Husky. No, I oh, used, that to used to work be a... for. Uh, I used to work for. I this like all of a sudden everybody's putting their like seven jobs up on the internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I used to work at School Bells, which is. Uh, yeah, I'm you worked at school, school bells? bells. Seriously, I, did. I was a fitter. Wait. Well, oh, like at the store, not at the shop. College freshman. I used to work at the factory across from the school bells factory, and I had friends that worked at the factory. At the you would go to schools and measure people. No, they would come there in like the summer. Wait, is the is it just one location, or did they? No, have... there's multiple ones. I used to work downtown. Okay, and then this was on Industrial one Parkway. On Industrial yeah, Parkway, yeah. which is where I worked later. Really? Yeah. Wait, from we what year to what year? There? I have no idea. Like everything's just, a blur. I guess. Like, uh, all right. Five well, I worked across from there from 2003 to like 2012 or something like that. Uh, maybe like 2002. Uh, I'm d- done. This podcast is over. So um, tell me about anyways. the Huskies but and the they, Slims. It, still, it was still. It was still called that. Still called See, Husky. I felt like that was pretty recent. That they like were still. A, I'm, it probably the, still is now. Yeah, they like you could go. It's like husky for boys. Yeah, that's it. I a, can't remember what I they think that's the a pretty stuff. pretty body body positive word for is it like you know compared like, to what are you gonna call it? Yeah, I don't broad. know. And huskies are really cool broad. dogs, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the broad section. Um, yeah, it was just like kids that were like a size and is a it, half. Is it versus hippie? Like the the length. The kids it was who like didn't oh. shed their baby yeah. fat they got yet. Wider. Some of us get it back, like, Tom. Like a big and tall men's store. We know what it really is. I mean, uh, your how, baby many, how many Cavaliers are buying a baby. suits there? It's what? Your baby fat came after you had that baby. Exactly. I, it literally did. And it, what, was that about Cavaliers having babies? What? Babies no. Babies having babies? I don't know. Wh- I'm so confused. Somebody said something about Cavaliers. Yeah, I said uh, the big and tall men's stores. We know what those stores really are. It's not like the Cavaliers are buying suits there. It's not, they, it's not like basketball players. Have you ever gone into there. one of those? No. You, you would classify as tall. You probably should. If you ever wanted to dress like Steve Harvey, go I into a, a big I and tall store. I can have a suit yes. measured wherever. Please do could, that. Could oh. I get, excuse me, sir, could I get a triple-breasted suit in mm-hmm. mauve? Triple-breasted? Yeah. I don't know if that's my... Like I, a, a auxiliary pair of buttons? I don't know. Center? I just imagine no, it as being yeah, almost like... A, um, it's like you know, double breasted. It's like uniform. pig nipples. Yeah, it look, yeah. But then if you had like a <laughs> two, third one, two down, ties like <laughs> old Marty McFly and the 
uh, uh, when he's when he's and it, like you know with it cut with the jacket cut to around your knees. Mm. Th- this is, I mean, that's more of a Cedric thing. But yeah, go into go into a big and tall and look around. The only reason I don't shop there is I'm sort of on the cusp of big and tall, mm. and that shit's expensive. They, I mean, do they have a husky section in the big and tall? <laughs> I don't even. I think at that point, it's just those are the skinny suits. <laughs> it's just you, you just go on the X rating. Man, there's been so much body shaming in this episode. Sorry. <laughs> Big and tall stores are X rated. Some people are gonna get that. What? <laughs> yeah, you, it, it's slim and slimmer over here. You're not gonna understand, but trust me. There's there's people in our audience that will get it. In high school, Horgy was called. You, in fact, those of you who I under- got it when you said it. What are you going to explain the joke? Everybody got <laughs> those your of you dumb who joke, understood Pete. it. Those of you who understood that joke, why don't you call in on our phone number two one six five 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 Corey two one six. It's two one six four three eight ten seventy seven. The price of a cheese pizza and a coke <laughs> in nineteen ninety nine. There also might be a lambda in there somewhere. Mm-hmm. Probably. So, Horchy. Yeah. Think, our guest. Okay. <laughs> Which one is the guest? I think it's that guy. Is it me? <laughs> <laughs> I feel really comfortable, so um, I don't think it's me. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for being on this uh, podcast Hi. show thing. Thank you. Uh, did You're you welcome. did you have a good time? Yeah. <laughs> Would you like people? Yes. <laughs> yes, that is the correct answer. Did you keep saying that? Um, did Did you learn anything about this? Did you learn anything about this I, episode? The, the use you... of nonverbal communication <laughs> is a great way to acquit yourself later. Oh wait, hold on. I have a, 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 a trivia game, real quick. Okay. Okay. All right, Sarah. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. What is the name? Of the planet that Fry, Leela, and Bender live on. Currently? Yes. Uh, Leela and Bender aren't around currently. It's in the future. And Professor Farnsworth and Hermes in Zoidberg. Wait, is it Earth? Yes! Oh my god, I didn't think you were going to get it! I was so worried because I was like, is there a twist in the future <laughs> that I can't remember? Yeah, I thought that was pretty movie? twisty. There's probably Earth? some weird retcon with Nibbler, apparently. I, I don't know. Do you have anywhere that you'd like people to find you on the internet to see things that you do or places you go or um, interesting pictures? No. No? I just <laughs> I just like <laughs> scaring people now. I just, I, don't do it. Don't do no, it. No, don't. No, it's obviously my personal account. Okay, what is it? Uh, it's Eisenhart. Mm-hmm. Like, at, uh, like a literal spelling. Like the eyes in your head. Like E Y E S and H E A R T S. Q Q Q. <laughs> you can find Sarah at uh, TrumpSupporters.com. On, uh, on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> on Twitter. Make America great again. <laughs> uh, Twitter, if you're interested in learning about a lot of uh, Native American rights, mm-hmm. you can go there and follow me. If you'd like to learn more about Sarah, check out your local Hashtag library. Not, <laughs> not your mascot. <laughs> uh, uh, what's the other one? Um, the chief. D the, the chief. The chief. Yeah, we're talking about Chief Wahoo. Yeah, let's get rid of him. Yeah, it's uh, it's oh. look, look. Was that thunder? That's yes. you know, no, that means we were supposed to get that yesterday, and it's finally here. Talking before about before Wahoo. the thunder oh. and lightning come and fry all this equipment, let's uh, let's shut it down. Thanks for joining us, Sarah. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Um, Thank you. you can find us on the Instagram <laughs> and Twitter accounts. Thank you. At SlurmCastPod. Oh, so that's, that's way you better. You can also Thank email us at SlurmCastPod at gmail.com. Uh, you can find us on our Facebook page. We do have the phone number that we just mentioned a few minutes ago. 216-438-1077. Which is the price of a cheese pizza and a Coke back in 1999. It's also a prize phone number and <laughs> if you can steal Horchie's debit card, you will be a legend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>